Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hi again, everybody. Thanks for joining us on Celebrating Act 2. And if you're a movie fan, like Art and mm. I are, you will love today's session with Manny Pacheco, the Hollywood historian, author of Forgotten Hollywood, Forgotten History, Son of Forgotten and, Hollywood, Road to and Forgotten so, Hollywood. So many things that that you've forgotten, John. He's <laughs> written about. Hey, Manny. You know what? He he came through. He came through with it. Good for yeah. you, John. <laughs> and that's without that's without <laughs> notes. Imagine what he could do if he had a teleprompter. Hey, if yeah. I could read. So, so Matt, I have a question for you because most of the time when we think of you and Forgotten Hollywood, it's like the history of Hollywood back in the days of yore. You know when they used to spell the words oldie, O L D E, um, or maybe slightly after that. You know, like after they invented film, but uh, right. you actually uh, your your knowledge of Hollywood is so deep, both in things way past 40, 50 years ago, but also things current. You know, just about we've had conversations a lot of them off screen about who's your favorite this and who's your favorite that, and you keep busting my chops about Roger Corman, but you know a lot about the stuff that you hate about him <laughs> and things like that. But we recently had a uh, uh, death of an EGOT, uh, which is the Tonys and the Oscars. And uh, he's got, got at least one of Grammys. these Grammys and, and one of the Emmy, uh, Emmy. Emmys oh. and also whatever else, uh, maybe first prize uh, on the S&H Green Stamp uh, uh, run, whatever it is. But anyway, we lost an EGOT, which is a, a pretty rare animal to begin with. But somebody that you don't normally think of uh, in the movie business, uh, uh, Sondheim. What can you tell? Stephen what Sondheim. Can you tell us about Stephen yeah. Sondheim. Loved his his musicals. I've been to all of them many times, uh, by by amateur local theaters and on Broadway. And it's just a remarkable experience. What what's with him in the movies? How did he get involved in that? And did what did he win an Oscar for? Well, you're asking a lot of questions and leaving none for John, but that's okay. But John, 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 John wasted himself with all the forgotten stuff. Yeah. First, let me just tell you that uh, Stephen Sondheim was a very lucky individual. Not lucky in the fact that his parents divorced, but when he moved in with his mom um, and they moved down the street from Oscar Hammerstein II, there became a mentorship until the death of Hammerstein in 1960 and basically just guided Sondheim into the world of uh, Broadway music. And that proved to be a very fortuitous uh, collaboration there and, and very, very saddened when he lost his mentor. Uh, but Sondheim uh, would right off the bat get involved with the movies once he, um, he collaborated with Leonard Bernstein of course, with uh, West Side Story. West Side Story became something very special uh, w when it came to the movie version uh, of this great Broadway musical. And so um, it started on Broadway as it normally does. Same thing with, um, I wanna say Gypsy was the other one. Uh, it started with Gypsy and, and West Side Story and then when they became um, movies, of course, the music of um, Sondheim was present. And in many cases, he was also asked to participate in, in the uh, scoring of the music. So it starts with, it starts with um, Gypsy and then moves to West Side Story. It, you know, I had not realized uh, until, I don't know, two years ago, recently, that Sondheim had... Uh, won an Oscar and had been involved in West Side Story. I, you know, the only name I had heard was Leonard Bernstein. Right. Right. Well, he didn't win the Oscar for West Side Story. That came way later. Mm. But it did lead to other Broadway successes that were then uh, made into uh, movies. Yeah. The, the, most, the, the earliest example besides West Side Story was A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum. What, what a great... 
What a great a play. I, I have actually seen a, a, a theater production of it. It's just a charming piece. But the movie version featured some really classic actors, Zero Mostel, Phil Silvers, Buster Keaton. Yeah. It's just a zany romp. And, of course, uh, Sondheim, he did, the, uh, he did the musical. It was not a success. And when the um, actually when the Tonys came out, um, just about everything from the, the play was nominated, but, but not, Sondheim, not Sondheim, believe it or not. Yeah. But I think it's one. Of, I think it's one of his really wonderful pieces, to be honest with you. So uh, yeah, but then he did other things that ended up becoming uh, some sort of a movie or sort. I, I think of a little night music, and I think yep. of Follies, and I think of Company. Um, if not, if not screen productions, they have been television sure. screen productions. Yeah. So um, I think that the most famous of his other works that became uh, uh, movies, uh, Sweeney Todd. The demon of, the demon barber of Fleet Street, which of course yeah. was starred Johnny Depp, and most recently Into the Woods, right. which featured Meryl Streep. What an amazing so, yeah. play and uh, movie, just really amazing. Well, you know something. You now uh, uh, you said something um, about um, uh, he was lucky because his parents were divorced, and then he he wound up with his mentors. He gave. I didn't know how much he really gave back to the theater and in encourage people, but uh, I don't know whether you recently saw uh, Tick, Tick, Boom, which was the uh, 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 story about uh, Jonathan Larson, who did Rent, his first play, right. and uh, it was a, a workshop, and one of the people who was advising and encouraging him was Sondheim, and even after that, yes. it flopped his first, because the world wasn't ready for it yet, because if you liked Rent, this was like a prequel to Rent, and the music was the same, and right. maybe the story didn't tie together as much, but uh, basically what uh, Sondheim told him is, he says, keep writing, okay? And then he got, the, yeah. then the story, of course, is that he did Rent, and he he, uh, he died of, of a, 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 a heart attack, an aneurysm, or something at the age of 35, just before it opened up off Broadway. So, I mean, there's a, if, you, if you like uh, that, but he was a central figure in encouraging people like Jonathan Lawson to keep writing. Don't worry about what people say, write what is in your heart. And then of course, who, who did that uh, uh, push forward to do his own thing? But Lin Manuel Miranda, who happened to direct Tick Tick Boom, who was influenced to do his rap kind of version of stuff from Jonathan Larson. So it made it's this, this it just it, it, it flowed right downstream. John, why am I here? He's giving my all my good oh, stuff okay. away. <laughs> God, God, you must have something. What did he win the Oscar for? Wait a minute, hold on. I, I have to, you, you let me unpack a little bit of that. Yeah, the, please. The, the reason why Sondheim was is was so giving to other writers and lyricists and and music makers was because of that early collaboration with Oscar Hammerstein. He never forgot, and he always learned to pay it forward. So Lin Manuel Miranda was one of the first to come out with his own uh, you know uh, tribute to the late Sondheim, and um, I, I I don't think. Miranda would be the guy he is today without the guidance of Sondheim as, the, as he has started to approach Hamilton. I think that there's a lot of Sondheim in, 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 in Miranda in his approach to Hamilton. So, yes, you are correct, Art. That he, he, was, he always paid forward to the young and upcoming Broadway aficionados that we can now enjoy today. But now, wait, excuse me. I, uh, just want to, I just want our audience to know that uh, I'm really more a bellhop because when, when it comes, I carry the luggage, but you know how to unpack it. I'm, 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 I'm bowing. I'm bowing to. I, I thought you were opening up your own concierge service. I mean, my gosh. <laughs> So, you know, Sondheim uh, paid forward, but he also collaborated with a number of people. But let me, before I tell you some, some interesting facts about that, one of the people he never really collaborated and considered a rival, a friendly rival, of course, was Andrew Lloyd Webber. And, you know, unfortunately, when you compare the two, Sondheim never, ever really 
fares as well as Weber. And many of the reasons is because Sondheim looked for material that was socially conscious, had social consciousness to it. And so he would he would pick dark material. I mean, I think Sweeney Todd and Into the Woods are really great examples of his success reaching into the darkness. But he had plenty of flops, way more than uh, than Andrew Lloyd Webber ever had. Now, he did win an Academy Award because we've been referring to that uh, through the entire interview. And he did it um, for a movie you would not expect. He collaborated with uh, Warren Beatty on the film Dick Tracy, a film that also starred uh, Madonna. And he wrote a song called Sooner or Later, and Madonna sang it, and she sang it at the Academy Awards. And lo and behold, Sondheim wins his Oscar for the movie Dick Tracy. Not Into the Woods and not wow. or, or, uh, or West Side Story. I mean, that, it's, it's a shocker that that's where he would win that's his Oscar, but that just shows the... remarkable. Yeah, but it shows his versatility, yeah. I think. And one other thing I, I need to mention, because I don't think people would expect this... Sondheim was a gifted writer, and he had one particular film that he collaborated on that nobody would ever expect him to be uh, as, as a screenplay contra a contributor. And that was the 1973 neo-noir mystery film, uh, The Last of Sheila. Now, first of all, let me just say he collaborated with none other than Anthony Perkins, you know, Norman really? Bates. Really? And yeah. Really? Wow. <laughs> it was directed by the... Um, very serviceable director, Herbert Ross. And it starred just, it's one of those great films that that's, there's no real star, but they, they're all pieced together as little mini co-stars. Uh, it's an ensemble mm -hmm. cast and it included Richard Benjamin, Diane Cannon, James Coburn, Joan Hackett, yep. James Mason, and Raquel Welsh. So it, it's an all-star cast. It's a, it's a whodunit. And it's just something you wouldn't expect Sondheim to be involved, but it it was a it was a mild success as well. So yeah, right. Yeah, you know, I always think of him as a composer, a lyricist. I never think of him as a writer. Um, but yes. look at all those credits that he writing credits, screenwriting Absolutely. credits. Absolutely. And and you know what else? Um, it, the movie that just came out a couple of years ago, Knives Out. Remember that that oh, movie? Yeah. Oh yes. Was yeah. he involved in that? Yeah, Jamie Lee Curtis and a few others. Okay. Yeah, that was that, that was uh, uh, the the person who credited that film. Uh, the uh, the individual who who directed and pr produced that film credited credited the Last of Sheila as the inspiration for Knives Out. Sure. So there you go. But well, he, he wasn't <laughs> yeah. directly involved in that. Knives Out. And, and you know, no. I, I've I've learned a lot today, guys, because I always thought, even though I knew he had done uh, most of his musicals that I've seen on film have been adaptions of his Broadway shows. I always think of him as a Broadway guy. Well, his uh, very, But I stand corrected today. Well, his very last work was uh, in collaboration with Steven Spielberg on the West Side Story that's about to come out. Yeah. And so imagine having Sondheim and Rita Moreno, two EGOTs, as uh, yes. Art likes to put it, working on the same film. And, and I think that Spielberg is an EGOT you know, in waiting. So, I mean, this is, I, I'm kind of looking forward to this. I only wish that Sondheim had lived long enough to see the remake. Um, but I'm pretty sure he saw some of the daily rushes and maybe a rough cut. And um, so, I, but he, that he worked up till the day he died. I mean, he was busy and he, and, and he was, you know, in his eighties when he right. passed. So, so yeah. I, I just, I just well, want our audience to know that um, uh, we, we try not to date, uh, uh, these pieces because they live forever on the internet. They're always so interesting. It doesn't matter if we're talking about leading men of the 30s or what, what have you. But uh, we just signed on to, to, uh, to uh, tape a series of interviews and uh, we were talking about what should we talk about in addition to the things that might have been planned. And I happened to mention some time. And uh, it's also we're we're now in the early December of the month. So I'll really date it, and Manny lights up like a Christmas tree. Sondheim, movie sure. He's not just Broadway. Did you know he did this and he did? Uh, where are you get this stuff from? Because Manny knows. Okay, if Manny well, doesn't know it, then they, you you might as well turn yeah. in your sad card because you you ain't worth a thing if you ain't got the bling with Manny Pacheco. That's all I gotta say. 
<laughs> I'm a big fan of, of, of Broadway musical theater, so that, that doesn't hurt. So thank you. Thank you for the kind words, Art. Well, thank you, Maddie, for just an absolutely stunning series of revelations just off the top of your head. You're yep. absolutely amazing. Thank you, Manny Pacheco. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.